What is going on, YouTube guys? It's Brendan from Market Makers, the Sunday kickoff show. I had to put a delay on that, my friends. My daughter came to visit me from the university. Haven't seen her in a couple of months, so we spent a lot of time together. So we're gonna make up for in this video, give you an in-depth dive in the marketplace. The markets are open right now at the time of this recording. It is almost 10 o'clock, I think, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Guys, so let's talk about the macro so you can understand the micro of what's happening right now in the marketplace. So in the U.S., we have elections November 8th. Midterm elections, a lot of governors, senators, Congress people are up. The Republicans are slated to take the House by the majority of estimates. And if you're looking at Predict It or some of these probability websites where you can gamble on this, they're also favored to take the Senate. Right now, the Democrat Party, the Biden, President Biden's administration, his party, they have complete control of the government. Complete control. So they can pass anything they want. They can do anything they want, assuming they all vote the party line. So what we're looking for is gridlock which markets like gridlock because if you look at the spending again in 30 months we we printed six trillion dollars we have 40-year high inflation the economy is cratering around us and you're gonna see that in 2023 guys so a lot of voters the number one issue obviously is inflation number two issue might be crime might be economy depends on the surveys you look at but you're looking at a change election and an economic election so this heavily favors the Republicans versus the Democrats and guys I saw a couple of comments saying man your political viewpoints are very one-sided well yes when you're living in a country where the whole government is controlled by one party that party is responsible for the state of the country just fact when if Trump was in power and Trump had the Congress and Senate he's responsible for the state of the country so you can throw all the flack on him now obviously I didn't have a YouTube channel then but we spent too much money under Trump we did a lot of things I didn't like but this current administration has been a complete economic disaster look at inflation it's been a complete foreign policy disaster look at what's happening with ukraine we're funding a proxy war and it's been a complete inflation disaster which is the local domestic economy as well okay so i expect a complete change here of the of, of power going for a red tsunami which is the republican side which could lead to a new president praying to God in two years because we shouldn't have somebody who's not mentally capable of doing the job doing the job and I'll leave it up to you guys to decide who those candidates are there's other people I would like to see get a chance to be president in this country but that's two years away doesn't affect the markets here today so let's talk about where we are in the marketplace guys looking at the 10-year yield on my screen the 10-year is pushing up okay so I'm sure everybody's freaking out on the business news you're at four spot one eight nine now you know the fed funds rate is pictured to be a lot of the big banks and institutions are looking at this now as a five to five spot two five terminal rate meaning they're going to keep raising rates to get above five essentially now that's higher than previously forecast so you're seeing this reflected in the two year the two year by the way hit its 2007 high Okay, I don't know. I think something happened in 2007, 2008. Might have been a big bubble crash. I'm not sure. We have the dollar, the DXY, the highest it's been since the Y2K crash. The yields here for the two year, the 10 year, they're all looking at the 2007 bubble crash. And we have an economy that's slowing down. Now, the S&P earnings, guys, were originally about 8%, slated to be 8% for Q3. We got about, I think, an average blended of 2%, and we were 8% for Q4, and that's been revised down now to minus 1%. That's showing you the economy is slowing. And Q1 is down to 6%, revised down from 8%. Now, remember, the S&P is the broader market. So what does that mean? I don't know how you're getting from minus 1% to 6%, but 2023 is when you're going to see the bulk of 
the bulk of the pain in the country, in the economy, guys. So when I see videos, I saw Four Flies has a, a Bitcoin to 81K video now that he put out the other day. Guys, you have to understand everything you're looking at right now is going to be cheaper next year. These prices are all elevated. They are bubble prices, including in crypto, and price will move in waves. But the tide, as Dow said, the tide is the primary trend. The tide is pulling out, it is receding. Price is coming down. Down. You will have price waves up and down and savvy traders can trade these price waves and make money on longs and shorts. Shorts are more profitable because you're trading in a bear market, okay, and everything. So you can see the 10 year here is going up. What else do we have going on this week? So also this week, November 10th, we have the new headline CPI. We didn't get that before the Fed announcement this time. We're getting it after. So November 10th is the CPI. Now, the street is expecting a seven handle on that CPI, meaning seven spot nine is what the street's expecting. Now, the Cleveland Fed has it at eight spot one. Now, I have this in front of me so I don't mess it up. Let me grab my handy dandy phone. So over the last 19 months headline CPI, CPI has beaten the Cleveland Fed estimate 16 times. 16 times. So 16 out of 19 times, whatever the Cleveland Fed said, it came in higher. So they're predicting eight spot one, which would be a spot one decrease from last month. But 16 out of 19 times, they've been too low. So I think as long as we have an eight handle, you're going to see the markets all pull back down. Again, 40-year high inflation. Powell gave his most hawkish speech he's ever given. He gave that at the last meeting. And he says they're not stopping. They're not pausing. Yes, they may eventually slow down the pace of the rate hikes, but they're going to hold it up higher. And you're going to see some type of crisis event eventually unfold in the market, whether it's a cratering of the stock market, a lockup in liquidity, something happened in the credit market. We don't know. These things can be unforeseen. How many people predicted specifically CD in 2008. Not many people. Watch that movie, The Big Short, guys. You'll see what I'm talking about. But let's get into the charts. What does this mean for the technicals? I'm going to take a couple deep dives. We're going to deep dive into Bitcoin. We're going to deep dive into the Dow, of all things, and I'll explain why. And then we're going to look at the other indices as well, all in this video, give you some clear-cut targets of where you can trade. And guys, as always, visit my sponsors because they bring you this content. Without the sponsors, no content. So support my sponsors, my friends. And that is BitGet to trade the cryptos. And it is Simple FX to trade equities, commodities, Forex, and a handful of cryptos. Those links are in the video description. If you guys like this content, even if you don't like it, but you get some type of entertainment value from it, maybe go ahead and smash the thumbs up and definitely give me a sub here on YouTube and check out our Rumble simply by going to Rumble and typing in Market Makers. We are uploading all the videos we do here and there will be exclusive content on Rumble. I promise I am working on it, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the DXY. DXY has been faltering. Looking at a rate of change indicator here because we can't use volume indicators on the DXY. Rate of change, this is showing the price rate of change. You can see, obviously, a downtrend below the median line. However, looking at our Wyckoff box here, we are holding the base, okay? So we're down thrusting here. We are at 110 spot 446. This is active. This is live as we we are recording with the with the 10 year pushing up you could also see the dxy we got our 75 basis point that gave us a wave up and now we fell back down so we're in chop guys we are in chop now the dxy as i said does not have to get to 121 to cause a crash it is an elevated pressure on the market the higher the dxy is the more pressure there is on equities and risk assets such as cryptos and specifically with the um with the with the bonds as well. What we've had happen now a couple of times in the last few weeks is the three month bond and the 10 year invert. The reason that's significant, everybody focuses on the two year, 10 year, but the reason that's significant is it has a 100% hit rate, a 100% hit rate for predicting a recession. So if you're still watching people on YouTube who, who don't understand the equity markets, who don't understand the macro market cycle, the bubble cycle we are trading in, and if you're watching the news and they're still talking about the feasibility of a soft landing. The feasibility of a soft landing, which has never happened, guys. Nine times we've had inflation above 5% going back to World War II. 
all nine times we had a recession. And I believe this will be a extremely severe recession. That three month and 10 year that inverted, it has a 100% hit rate for predicting a recession with an average lag time of five to eight months. You're looking at spring to summer of next year where the US will be in a hardcore recession. If you're in a hardcore recession, if only we had some way of statistically knowing what the markets do, regardless of being in a bubble cycle or not, we know the S&P declines an average of 35% in a recession. The s and is down 20%, guys. You're looking at a bare minimum of almost a doubling in the losses in the S&P. We're going to jump into all this, okay? Got to get got to get all the rants and data off my chest because I did not get to talk to you guys on Sunday. So you can see the DXY, it's holding its range. Where am I concerned about this? Well, you clearly have a double top that formed here. I'd be concerned if we break down below maybe 109 okay you break down below 109 and you can start looking at looking at these other support areas but we're still in this white cough range i don't see a reason why we would break down below 109 at the moment but i'll keep you guys apprised of that let's look at bitcoin on the weekly okay i zoomed in here obviously bitcoin on the weekly did an upward wave projection so you guys can see see a couple of things here right so again you know you hear me talk about tidbits of dow theory all the time Primary trend is the tide. Tide's going out. Price is coming down. What is what is a secondary trend? That's the waves, guys. And you can see the waves very clearly in the weekly, right? You wave up, wave down, lower high, wave down, lower high again. So you're looking for that rollover here. And then, of course, the minor trend would be the intraday movements looking at the smaller time frames, okay? But the tide is still down. This is holding support. This is holding support much stronger than it, I thought it would be able to. There's a lot of support at that. I guess 17.5 to 20, 21, 22K region, okay, for Bitcoin. But it also is because the equity markets haven't lost their lows. That's the key takeaway. I've been saying this all along that June lows, if they're held, Bitcoin could easily hold its lows as well. Now you start looking at things, how they add up. You got a double top on your MFI. Remember, this is the money flow index. This is a volume weighted RSI. This is a leading indicator, okay? If you break your median line, you're going in the bearish territory. I'm looking at the volume rate of change here. Remember, this is wave volume, momentum for volume. This is momentum for buying and and selling and you have very low momentum here in Bitcoin you did pop up here in these last couple candles but we're gonna zoom into the daily so you can see this a little bit better looking at the daily time frame looking at divergence here on the MFI divergence is much more powerful on the MFI than it is on the RSI because it includes volume okay so when you're looking at divergence here you have a series of lower highs in your MFI and you have higher highs here in price okay this is why i put a short in here in the room last night right here at that level that 21.2 level of bitcoin is at 20,681 at the moment and you can see we crossed the median line we're going bearish territory here volume momentum is dying off losing the moving average and you had much more momentum much higher participation here in the price to get the spike up here than you do right here so we also have this fibonacci fan we're going to get into fans in a little bit i think if we have time here going back to the pandemic low and look how price literally just wicked it when it came down okay just wicked it when it came down we have our wyckoff trading range that we've been respecting here for i mean this has been a long time guys this is june so for all of you still watching for this huge duration i hope many of you have been able to take some of these trades we've suggested but um and also of course consider joining our room join button right underneath this video come check out what 13,000 other people are really enjoying which is our discord room guys live streams trade signals community fantastic place and education most importantly so I'm looking at Bitcoin here you're always looking for shapes of what you could be doing this could potentially end up being a head and shoulders this could be a disjointed double top this could reverse now I I think what's going to happen as a catalyst for the marketplace I got sidetracked on my rant in the beginning I think what's going to happen as a catalyst, guys, is you have that CPI coming in. If that CPI comes in hot, 
I expect the markets to turn back down. That is the opposite of what everybody's thinking. When I say everybody, I would say mainstream media. I would say a lot of YouTubers. I would say what I'm seeing in Twitter from some people. And again, some people that I follow personally that I respect, they're all talking about the Santa Claus rally, the seasonality. This is a good time for stocks. I'm going to disagree and I'm going to show you why. And it's going to relate to the Dow specifically as well. But when you're looking at Bitcoin, I primarily trade based off the technicals. Okay. I use the macro to understand the environment I'm trading in. This is, for me, this is very bearish. I'm seeing bearish indications here, bearish divergence on the MFI. I'm seeing price potentially drop. I'm seeing us locked in this Wyckoff trading range. And I'm looking at our targets higher up here of the 233 and 200, 200 at 26K and the 233 at 23.8. Could we get a surge up? Yes, that would be the catalyst of the CPI potentially coming in with a seven handle on it. If we get a seven handle, I would not be surprised to get a spike up in many assets. Bitcoin hasn't tested. It's 200 on the daily in quite some time, guys. Let's go. Ahead. Let's just go back and look at when the last time this was. And remember, this is traded as a risk asset by the bigs, okay? So the 200 on the daily, we broke it here. This is that big trade I told you about. I may, I talked about it on YouTube, put it in the room, the 48266 trade, caught that massive drop down, okay? All about the big money trades. Here's our 618 from our Fibonacci fan, right in this intersection, long-term moving average resistance, understand how to read the markets. I don't understand how a lot of these traders don't trade with geometric concepts or don't trade with Fibonacci. The esoteric knowledge in the marketplace because you can nail these massive trades again guys 60 plus percent drop from this trade for everybody that took this trade 60 plus percent drop now that was the last time going back in March when we tested a uh, broke above the 200 and tested the 233 Bitcoin hasn't done that since it will do it at some point and that's what I'm saying you can see how how far these have descended but it will do it at some point if that CPI comes in low this this could be the point where it does it. And if it does it, guys, in my view, obviously you wait for tops to roll over. We'll look at support or resistance levels, but this is a monumental potential trade for a big drop. Okay, now we didn't get our big drop down based off my weekly candlestick pattern. It is a bottoming pattern. We should be, according to that candlestick pattern, waving up. But the, the, the landscape of what's happening with the marketplace is changing. The elections need to happen. The CPI data needs to come out. Powell gave his most hawkish speech ever, which muted the markets. They recoiled from their pumps. And that's why the landscape is ever changing. You have to pay attention to the technical. There's a group of people, I'm sure, that just want somebody to go on here and say, hey, by the way, Bitcoin is at 20724 In two months, it's going to be 40 k And they're like, yes, yes. Well, unfortunately, guys, that's not how trading works. It changes on a daily basis, an hourly basis. There's macro events that we cannot control. What the Fed does, is there conflict in the world? Is that conflict getting escalated? Do we have commodity shortages? Does something happen that makes that even worse? You know, inflation, what are those numbers month to month? These things are out of control. But what you can look at is the candles, see how price is responding to these events. And that's why, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, you guys have to watch this channel so we can go over this stuff on a regular basis. But eventually we will come up and test this. Let's go ahead and do some TA here on Bitcoin. Bitcoin on the daily. Okay. I want to do some TA. We're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to use a line chart because I want to use the bodies and not the wicks. Okay. I want to show you, I want to, I want to see what, I want to show you guys what I'm looking at here. So if we look at a wave projection here using our trend base fit, okay, utilizing our trend base fit, this is what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing, you can see price respecting this. You're between the 382 at 20,552 and the 0 0.5 at 21,201. The 618 is at 21,850 utilizing the bodies and not the wicks. Now the bodies for me is king. Okay. The bodies is king, but when you're trading the wicks, the Wix is like the royal court because it gives you the optimal entry. Like if you have a wick that obviously hits the 1618, regardless of where the body closes beneath it, you want to be able to capture that wick. But sometimes it's worth 
changing up how you're drawing your resistance or support if you always use wicks or always use body bodies i go back and forth and just look at the different levels to see what's being respect respect it and see what's tracking cleaner you can see the one fib at 23951 has that 233 now if we go in between here we'd have to add some levels here to see where we're at if we throw on the 1272 does that at the 200 not quite it's just beneath it so maybe we need the 1414 let's check the 1414 so you're between the 1272 at 25 450 and the 1414 26 228 now i mean again the reason i'm looking at this is if that cpi comes in with a seven handle which i personally don't think it will just looking at the statistics of how often underestimated the uh, Cleveland Fed is, I think you're going to have an eight handle on there, whether it's 8.0, 8.1, 8.2. 8 if it's 8.2, it's the exact same number as last month. If it's 8.1, it's 0.1 difference. And the Fed has been hiking like crazy. So, you know, it, I think the market's going to take that very, very negatively. And with the elections over, I think your election bounce will start to fade. So this is what we're looking at, guys. You have these levels here to pay attention to, but you got to break out. And to break out, you got to have momentum. So let's go ahead and get some downward projections here as well. Let's look at this. We can do this a couple different ways. We can use a fib retracement. And we'll use a fib retracement here and get this up projection and just see where this would land you on a down projection, okay? So your downward projection, and look at your line chart, how clearly it's respecting some of these fibs, okay? And if you turn this back to your candles, you can see this. So your 618 was at 21047 here on this projection of a fib retracement, right? And if you look at your one fib, it becomes the base of your Wyckoff at 18946. It's literally the same line. Do you see that? So I'm looking here at the, at the daily time frame, Again, looking at this potential for a double top to form. If we get this negative momentum still in the marketplace and we can't hold the support, you start looking at your downward projections, 19,573, 8, um, 18,946, the 1618 at 15,548. And of course, if we want to add some fibs here as well, we can get some other projections here for this retracement. If we want to go ahead and throw on, what do we need? We need the uh, 1414, one spot 128, 1272. Give you some more targets here. If this does start breaking down, look for the one fib to try to hold us at 18.9, which is roughly 19K, which again, you've tested multiple, multiple times here. Your one spot 128 at 18,242, which you've tested multiple times. 1272 at 17,450, 1414 at 16,669, 1618 at 15, 548. These are all potential stops. That's a fib retracement. We can also do wave projections, as you know, and you guys can play with your waves, but you can do tighter wave projections, shallower wave projections. I'll go ahead and do one here. Let's go ahead and put this back on a line chart. Let's go from the top here. We're going to take this base, okay, this base to go up to this peak. That's what I want to just do. And you got, again, you guys can play around with this. When you do it this way, you have the 618 now becomes your Wyckoff base. You see that? 18,907. And so I have my 764 here, 18,079, the 886 at 17,387, the 1 fib at 16,740. And going back down this way, you have the 1618 at 13,235. Now remember, when you're doing projections or retracements based off the line chart, you're using the bodies. You're using the bodies, okay? So you're, you're not using the wicks. So your numbers are going to vary. So if you did this with the wicks, you get 12,000 something for the 1618, but doing it with the bodies, you get 13,235. Again, it's just it depends how you look at the market. If you want to catch that wick, the potential for a wick to be there, obviously that lower number would be better. But if you're looking at this cumulative TA, right, where does it close? That's the important thing, understanding where the price is actually closing, the 1618 at 13,235. So I use both, just wanted to share this with you, show you some different ways here to look at your TA. And and when you turn this back to candles, you can see how cleanly this kisses some of these levels like the 764, 18,079. So that's your down and up projections. And again, bearish divergence, less volume momentum, volume rolling over here uh, beneath the moving average, lower volume wave than you had on this previous spike. So this looks like it could be petering out, barring a catalyst such as a seven handle on the CPI. Going to the eight hour guys, remember going in through your time frames. 
looking at your MFI being rejected by the median line. Again, volume dropped off, participation dropped off substantially, your volume rate of change, and your, your back testing as we talk, the 233 here on the uh, eight hour time frame. okay? You lose the 233, you're gonna look at your 200 for support, 19,831, very close to that 19,000 number we have on the daily. The daily is my gold standard for my TA, and then I zoom in to see more uh, current price action, okay? Let's go ahead and look at the Dow. Why is the Dow important? Dow's important for a couple of reasons. You know, you wouldn't, you know, you've heard me say the Dow only has 30 companies. Even with only 30 companies, the Dow has about a 90% plus correlation with the S&P 500, which has 500 companies. Very interesting, right? It just does. And it's part of it's because it's based on sectors, the companies that are in the Dow, they have a little bit of everything in there. But the other part of it here is just, you know, almost half of the market is bought by algos, right? It's bought by robots. So if you understand that, guys, the reason I want to look at the Dow here is a couple of things. Using a Fibonacci fan from the, uh, from the, from the pandemic low and the high, the all-time high, okay? Using Fibonacci fans, there's a couple of things. The Dow is the cleanest one right now to really focus on. And I'm saying that out of all the indices, because the Dow had its best October ever in like 46 years, like back to 1976, it had its best October ever. So it pumped when everything else failed, okay? So that means a couple of different things. That could mean if you're a bull, which again, the majority of mainstream media, a lot of YouTubers in the equity space, they're all bulls talking about Santa Claus rally, they think the Dow is going to do this. Okay. I look at the companies that are in the Dow, things like, you know, Caterpillar, a lot of these companies, Honeywell, they had, they, they had their runs. They look exhausted to me. When I look at it like an index, I don't trade individual stocks typically, but when I look at it like an index, very easy TA principles you can do here, guys. Again, Fibonacci fans, what line is being respected this whole way down? This 618. When you're looking in a downtrend, and again, the weekly 50, the daily 200, this is what all the algorithms of the robots, not all, but a majority of them for the big banks and hedge funds are programmed on. You got rejected from the 50, reject it from the 50, reject it from the 50 again. You're holding this triangle. Do you see this triangle? Here's your 200 moving average. So the likely course, again, especially if the CPI comes with the eight handle, the likely course is the Dow being in a bear market being in a bearish downtrend, right? The tide is out. The Dow will come back down again. Okay, so this is a clear candidate to short. It pumped up to just under, just over 33K. It's at 32.5. If you flip over to the daily, it's hitting the 200 right now. We're going to go back to the daily. Let's stay on the weekly for a second. It's hitting the 200 right now. Okay, and a couple of things I want to show you here, guys. You have your double bottom here on your MFI. You pop up right you're above the median line I threw on this trend line because you're hitting the exact same peak area you've hit on this MFI several times now and it's rolling over some you look at your volume momentum again remember this shows buying and selling its momentum of participation in the marketplace you had a lot of volume up here for the all-time high lots of volume here for the sell-off and now you're basically just flat right but you had this big 40-year high rally okay with very low participation, fewer participants paying higher prices for assets. This is the rotation to safety that you hear so many talking heads talking about in the marketplace, getting out of high growth, high speculative things, putting it into industrials, putting it into energy, putting it into whatever else they feel is safer before the major downturn next year. But you still have the technicals being respected. Now, if we look at this from a technical perspective, let's go ahead and do this. And this video is going to be long. I don't know how many of you are going to watch this whole video. I'm looking at this 28 minutes, but I respect you if you watch this whole video. Let me know if you did watch the whole thing, because that'd be pretty incredible. We're already at 28 minutes. If we just take a flagpole of our triangle that's formed here from the 618s, okay? You're not going to find this in a book, by the way. You're not going to find, there's nobody that's going to say, take a triangle formed by 618 Fibonacci flags, or Fibonacci uh, fans, and pull, pull out the uh, flagpole from it to do this, okay? I'm doing this for you because I want to show you something here, okay? I'm a Fibonacci trader, and I want to show you what I'm looking at here. So if you look at this, right? So here's your flagpole. Now, let's go ahead and put this here. 18,208. 
All right, 18,028. Is there any reason to think you go to 18,028? Look where your pandemic lows are. Do you see your pandemic lows? 18,000, roughly 19,000. The wick down there, 18,282. Do you see how close that gets with the symmetry in the marketplace? Okay, you, the, the whole premise of having the bubble, right? Of having the S&P double in two years, right? Double, went up over 120%. The NASDAQ up over 120%. They doubled. They normally go up 10 to 11% a year, specifically the S&P, okay? Ever since the money printing. It went up 120% in two years. That's your bubble. That bubble's coming back. And when you look at this, just from a technical perspective, look at that. This is where the Dow is going to end up. Not saying it's going there if this breaks down right now. This will be sometime in 2023. If we follow that seven-year cycle, which has captured every single bubble crash back to 1973, the market should bottom in 2023. So at some point between now and 2023, you're going to see this level, I do believe, on the Dow. But let's see if we can do this a couple different ways here. Let's go ahead. Let's turn this to a line chart, okay? Let's turn this to a line chart. Let's get a wave projection. I want to do a wave, and let's see where this wave projection goes to. Again, we're going off the bodies here doing it this way, okay? So let's see what we get to here. You start looking at this. The 1618 pulls you up to 23,283. The 2618 brings you down to 16,816. Again, this trend line, but look at the difference here. See the, see the, the candle close versus the wick? You see that? So that's what I'm telling you. You need to understand both methods here of where price closes versus where price can touch. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this with the candles. I want to see what this looks like with the candles as well. If we do this with the candles, we're going to take the peak this time down to the base of this wick up to the peak of that wick. And now you get 22,429, right? Which brings you up to this mid range of the pandemic, just below the 200, and you get 15,108, okay? I like the bodies here when I'm looking at this, but when I'm looking at this from straight TA chart perspective, understanding where price, the extremes that price can go, I guess is the best way to say it, right? You look at the wick, you look at the flagpole, and you look how they line up at 18.2. I think you're coming somewhere down into this quadrant when the market starts breaking down. Obviously, we have more candles, we can take new projections, and you can look at it that way as well. Let's, all right, let's just try a fib retracement here and see what a fib retracement would do. We'll just use the wicks since we have this lined up with wicks. Go up to here. That's your one fib. I mean, obviously, that's your one fib. A hundred percent move. It's a hundred percent retracement. Remember, Dow theory: fifty percent the natural having and doubling in the market. The doubling would be a hundred percent. So you can see your different levels. We'll see how this respects it. Twenty-five k on a fib retracement is a big six one eight level. So if your price does break down, you could look for a bounce up here. And uh, we've already lost the two hundred and bounced back above it. Let's go ahead and not waste too much time here on the Dow on the daily, guys. What does this look like? It's forming to you now I know some of you may be new to TA but you've been watching this channel what does this look like it could form some people get mad when I predict these things you could form a double top right either coming back up to your 32981 which you tested and had supply dumped on you right here or you could just start rolling over here right at the 200 moving average, okay? Because you're at the 200 on the daily right now, 32,553. Your MFI is above the median line, but look at your volume momentum again for this pump. Less participants. This is your next door neighbor, your best friend, your ex-girlfriend, your ex-boyfriend, whatever your case may be. Buying the dip. Got to buy that dip, guys. Got to buy that dip. Less participation in the marketplace, but price is going up, creating volume divergence which again means this will fail okay i think if we get that eight handle not trying to repeat myself but i want to drill this down you will see these markets all roll over and you will not get the santa claus rally that everybody wants let's go ahead and look fast forward i'll make this a little bit quicker going into the eight hour time frame look how trend lines are respected you see your double top forming here right along this base you're getting rejected on the eight hour time frame here at the median line for money flow price is still rising again 
throw this onto a uh, line chart. You can see this as well. You can see it more clear. You're 200, 233 beneath you at 31,425. And you can see this being respected here in this wedge. Let's look at the Russell really quickly. Russell, pandemic, Fibonacci fan, big double top form. And the double top broke here on the weekly and it is bearish, okay? So your double top is bearish here on the weekly time frame. You're below the median line on the MFI negative participation, losing participation in the Russell, yet you had this rally up, okay? You had this rally. Again, rallies to fade. Now, the rally, didn't, you're, you're just now, you're struggling with the 200, 233. I know it's zoomed out, but I want to speed through this a little bit because I want to show you the daily. Daily time frame. You got above your 50, okay? You never kissed the 200. We had a lot of traders, including myself. I had preset orders here at the 200 to execute right at this fan line, right at the 200. Didn't get that trade in. And so you can see that you fell back down. You're bouncing back up off the 50. Now, if you're bouncing off the 50 and you do get any type of momentum, where could that bounce take you? Uh, to a double top. The market's all, all poised to come back down, guys, depending on these macro events that happen. May get a little push up when the Republicans win because the consensus view just in the business space is they're friendlier to business, friendlier to small business, not as uh, anti-business slash communist as the current administration is. But, you know, that's the consensus view. So maybe you get a little bit more of a pop. Maybe that comes up, then it comes down. But I think, guys, my view is all these markets are poised to roll back over. Look at the participation. Just negative, 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 all the way down below the moving average. What is price doing? Price is going up, guys. This is how you make tops. I beat a dead horse. I say this over and over again, but I want everybody to make as much money as you can over the course of the next year because next year is going to be tough on a lot of people. S&P on the weekly, guys. S&P on the weekly. 618 Fibonacci, as you can see, fell below the 200. Pump back up. And looking at the 50, nowhere near. Again, the Dow was a big performer, okay? The Dow outperformed. It pumped all the way up to the 50 on the weekly. Nothing else got near that 50, okay? So your 50 is well above you. So technically, in a technical perspective, staying in a bearish market, you can still come up and test that 50. But you're looking at your money flow, bearish, okay? Negative, broke a double top, retested the median line, fell back below. Bad participation here in the S&P. Big tech getting crushed. That definitely weighs on the S&P. Going to S&P on the daily time frame, 200, 233, well above you. You pumped above the 50. You could not clear the 618 here, guys, at 39 14. Okay. Remember the consensus on wall street is 4,100 for a rally to get to. Okay. Couldn't clear 3914 got rejected. Now you're testing the 50 again. You're back into Wyckoff testing the 50 and let's see if you can break it. You got rejected as we speak could easily wave back up and do what once again, guys, Watch for these shapes in the marketplace, especially if CPI comes in hot, okay? CPI comes in with a seven handle, then watch these up here, your 200, 233, because these land you big trades in a primary downtrend. Jumping to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ again, NASDAQ's probably the ugliest of all of them. Weekly time frame, money flow is net negative. Below the 200, below the 233, even the Russell is above one of the two. I think it's wedged between the 200 and 233 on the weekly. The NASDAQ, because of the bleed off in big tech, right? The bleed off in big tech, you are below the 200, 233 on the weekly. Zoom into the daily. Daily, it's just an ugly chart. You're below your Wyckoff trading range. You never even made it to the 50. SPX pumped above. Russell pumped above. Russell almost made it to the 200, 233. The NASDAQ never even made it to the 50. The Dow got all the way up to the weekly 50, breaking through all the resistance, and now is making a top. So we do have room, guys. You have room to back test your 50. And in a bullish market reversal, a Santa Claus rally, you could come up and test your 200 and 233. And you will see everybody freak out and tell you, this is it. This is it. That's the bottom. It's coming back, guys. It's coming back. They say that. But then when you look at the charts and we look at our trades in our room <laughs> and where we short it, uh, every time you get close right? You get, you split the 233 to 200, you get big trades, guys, to the downside, okay? 
big trades to the downside here in my chameleon harmonic, okay? So just be aware, guys. Primary trend is always going to rule the day. 40 minutes. I hope you guys got notepads. All right, guys. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I'll answer your comments as always if you have any questions. I'm uh, happy to debate any issues with you as well as long as you keep it professional and cordial and be nice to others, everybody. All right, guys. Have a fantastic day. Another video coming. I guess I might do one tomorrow, but if not, it'll definitely be the next day. I'm probably going to let this video burn in for 24 hours. This is a lot of information. Talk to you guys next video. Take care, guys.